Hello everyone, welcome back to Tax Riders. In this video, we want to have a look at an alternative solution for building this nice helical shape geometry. Uh, in the previous video, we built this using Salome. In this one, we want to construct this using FreeCAD. Let's go for it. Okay, so we want to build this geometry this time in FreeCAD and we want to mesh it again in Salome because uh, Salome has lots of good interfaces to finite element codes. Uh, I mean, uh, for exporting the mesh. And uh, before going on, I want to just repeat, if you don't know that what we want to do here in this episode, we want to simulate something like this. It's a helical exchanger, he he hel helical heat exchanger. And uh, it, we want to demonstrate the, the power of Pen source finite element solvers. But before that, we need to construct the geometry. And then later on, we will import this geometry into various finite element solver codes to see how we can uh, perform those simulations. So uh, without losing time, let's go to FreeCAD. And uh, yeah, let's see how we can create a um, uh, simple uh, spring there. And uh, uh, let's say that we, we don't want to go for a precise replication of what we have created in Salome. Here, I just want to show you how you can create a helix similar to the one that we created in the previous video and how you can transform it, how you can convert it from the FreeCats format to, to something that Salome can understand. And it aimed to just demonstrate the easy and the, the, the ease of use when you want to have different programs for doing different tasks. Like we want to create our geometry here in FreeCAD because as I said, FreeCAD has a better interface. It is more user friendly. So people may be more comfortable to create their CAD models, their geometries, the shape of the complex, their complex shapes here. And then it's easy to transform it, to change, to exchange it to another format that Salome can understand. And this just shows you how easy it is to do this. But as I said, I don't want to have uh, the final model that we want to simulate uh, created here. So I don't want to uh, model this uh, precisely as what we did in, in the previous video. We just want to create a spring here as a demonstration. Okay, so let's start. We should start by create by creating a new document, apparently. And uh, yeah, let's go to the part or part design modules. FreeCAD has also lots of modules similar to Salome. Here we go to the part because it is here. It's here where we can create primitives. So I click on create primitives from the part menu. And then I select the helix primitive to be created. And as I said uh, in the previous video, that the, this is the term that people usually use when they want to create helix. It's a pitch means the number of the, the distance between different turns. And uh, yeah, the height and the radius. So as you can see, these are the things that we can uh, change. But uh, this is a very small size helix. So let's increase it a little bit. And um, yeah. That's okay. We don't want to change the location and uh, we click on the create button. And uh, this is the one, the, the simple, a very simple one. I said, I don't want to replicate uh, the one we created in previous video. So that's fine. And then now we need this gauge. As I said, this is a kind of, this is the typical model people usually perform when you want to create helix. So we need a base. In this case, a base sketch that is replicated through uh, a path. So uh, we need to create a sketch here. The 2D sketch the, uh, is very common to start with in this kind of CAD modeling projects. So I go to the part design this time. And then on a the model that we have, I create a new sketch. It should be somewhere here. Yeah, create a new sketch, this one. So I click on this and then I need to uh, select the plane on which we want to 
uh, draw this sketch. In this case, as you can see, the helix, if you put the, the base of this helix on the XZ plane, it will be like perpendicular to the start of the path. So I select the X, Z plane, I click OK. It becomes orthogonal or normal to the, uh, the view will become normal. And then here I can create a circle, like where it starts to, uh, the path starts. And uh, yes, just to make it more standard, let's create also, uh, yeah, a, uh, a sort of constraint on that. In this case, it's, it's, it's a dimension constraint. So I click on that and it asks me for the, for the size, I would say one millimeter. I don't know. It is too small, I think. So yeah, let's make it three millimeter. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the dimension of the circle. And then we close the sketch. So we don't need the sketch anymore. And as you can see, now we have everything ready to, for creating the helix. Then we need an operation like a sweep operation that should be somewhere like here. Is this sweep? No, this is loft. This is another type of operations, 3D operations. And this is sweep. So as you can see, it's written sweep, selected sketch along a path. So I click that. The object is automatically the, the, the profile or the base is usually is the sketch, which is this one, the sketch that we created here. And then we select the object, the path to sweep along. And then I click on this helix. As you can see, it is a preview of the, of the object. And then I click OK. This asks for uh, that the geometry because this is a type of helix that it creates by replicating multiple, let's say, curves. And I say, yeah, just join them. And uh, yeah, this is the geometry that we wanted to have. And uh, this is really, really nice, I can say. So uh, let's uh, import this into Salome because we want to have those meshing features of Salome. And uh, in order to do that, we need to, we need to use one of these exchange formats. In this case, we can use TP or step file safely, I can say. It says you shouldn't select this. So we select the additive pipe or the sweep object that we created. I export it. Let's put it on a desktop. It doesn't matter. And then I will call it Helix. I save it and uh, then yeah, we have it here, helix.step and then I will start Salome and import this SDP file there. In the geometry module, again, similar to before. And then here we have import and step file or SDP file. Again, on a desktop, helix.step, and then it says dimensions should be considered or not, uh, that because the default is millimeter. You remember we had also millimeter there, so we can say yes or no. But you know, these these are, I don't say that these are not important. But what you should always consider is when you want to add units to the simulation. So it doesn't matter if you press yes or no. I told you in the previous video that you have the bonding box feature of Salome, you can get the dimensions and just see if they're in the millimeter or meter or inches whatsoever. Just choose the units for various quantities, physical quantities based on the units that you have here. So for this case, I press yes, but I said it doesn't matter generally because you can always switch the units in the final simulation code or simulation program. That's the, that's the stage, that's the step that you should be very careful and cautious about this, about the units, I mean. So this is the geometry. And then again, similar to, to all the steps that we had before, I can go for creating the groups. Um, yeah, I don't want to go for that. I don't want to replicate. I don't want to re just repeat the steps that I took in the previous video. But yeah, this is uh, just a, a note here that I should say is um, when you want to select the wall, because here you see that the walls are disconnected. That was the error message or a question that Freak had asked about joining multiple independent paths or cares or objects. 
So if I select this, you can see that this is only one of the uh, one of the surfaces because it's joined here. So and it's divided here into two parts. So I need to select both of them added here if I want to create the, the wall group for the boundary conditions. And, and as I said, generally, we don't need this boundary condition. But yeah, if you want to do that, this is the place that you need to apply it. And you should select both interface, both uh, boundaries. But as I said, I don't want to create the groups, but that's very similar to the previous one. And then I go to the mesh and uh, here I can create a mesh again, a tetrahedral and netgen. The hypothesis, you can see that these are, this is because uh, of the, the units. So apparently the units, I also, I said yes, but apparently the units are that's because the units are by default meters here. And when you import them by millimeter, then they become very, very small. But it doesn't matter. This is just uh, Salome can handle it. I press apply and close, and then I compute the mesh. It should be the coarse one. And a fast, uh, as you see, fast mesh generation. And uh, again, uh yeah this uh, this is the way that uh the mesh is here and then we can all uh, export it to to the format that we want but i haven't uh, inserted the boundaries and as i said this is not a mesh that we want to use for our simulations but uh, as you can see we were able to reproduce the same process here and uh, yeah this the, the the whole workflow for converting the free cad models to salome is as simple as this and yeah, I hope you find it uh, useful. In the next video, we will start with the simulations and uh, we will see how we can perform the transient uh, heat transfer simulation on these uh, helical heat exchangers. Uh, yeah, so see you later.